Hello YouTube, it is your boy B3, back with another kicking action figure review. Today's review is over another DC Multiverse figure. I guess I'm collecting DC again, because we've been reviewing a bunch of these. It is the DC Multiverse, DC Rebirth, the Joker. So this is kind of a modern, current Joker figure. All my Joker figures that I've had as an adult collector have been like very specific Jokers, like a Dark Knight Joker, and Justice Joker, and Endgame Joker, and I, I don't really have just a general all-use Joker. And uh, now I do. That's which is why I picked this guy up. Plus I didn't have a Joker in this scale at all. Here he is, you know, he's just 12 and up. There he is in the package. Toppity bottom, the Joker. The Joker DC Rebirth. There's a little cover there. Got more figures as well. I do need Dawnbreaker, Devastator, Asriel, etc. But I do have Murder Machine and Grim Knight, thankfully. So, uh, yeah, let's bust the Joker out of package. And here he is out of package, the Clown Prince of Crime himself, DC Rebirths, the Joker. Yeah. Often considered by many to be the greatest villain ever written. Uh, really cool looking figure, you know? Uh, glad I picked it up. So, uh, let's uh, get ourselves situated here, because first I'm going to show you his accessories. First, he comes with the same two things that every one of these McFarlane multiverse figures come with. A DC stand. It's the same stand for every figure in the line. And also, this kind of trading card with uh, like the comic book art on the front and then on the back it's got stats you see this is him from Justice League number 8 height 6 foot 1 weight 160 pounds once a small time crook the Joker fell into a vat of chemicals that turned his skin white his hair green and his lips red like a crazed clown his crimes <clears throat> always involve pranks and jokes ending with twisted punchlines that are only funny to the Joker. He may look like he's clowning around, but this guy is bad news for Batman and Gotham City. Very cool. Figure itself is pretty rad as well. Oop. Let me get positioned here. <laughs> uh, it's got a good bit of articulation on this guy. Mine's a little stiff because he's been in the cold for a while, but uh, I'll fix that later. I'll be careful with his hair here, it does stick out. He's got like side to side on the head, a wobble, a little bit up and down. I wish he could throw his head back a lot farther so he could do a big Joker laugh pose, you know? And then, based like nothing on the torso, which kind of sucks. I feel like he could have fit uh, a joint in there and it looked fine, but they didn't, it's just, it's just waste. Uh, up and down on the arm, and you got a, a little bit of movement in there. Forward and back. Bicep swivel. Double elbow bend. Forward and back on the wrist. Rotation on the wrist. You've got in and out on the leg. Forward, back. A double knee bend. Very cool bit of a ankle pivot there, side to side, and the toe joint. The feet don't move that well because of the cuffs on the pants, however. I mean, the guy is styling, but uh, his articulation honestly could be better. It's not as good as most other figures I have from this toy line. Uh, and you know, I was never super crazy about McFarlane's DC articulation anyways, or the articulation on any of their current toy lines, now that I think about it. But, uh, yeah, this guy's worse than usual. Detail and paint's pretty good, though. Not sure what's up with all the orange around his eyes. That, that seems pretty excessive. What is this, the 70s? Like, wow. Uh, I think the hair is sculpted very well, though. Like, the head and everything is sculpted quite well. The suit looks good. He's got his little spray flower, and it's, like, even in the shape of a mouth, which is kind of cool. He's got the coat tails, which are a pretty good addition, I think. I really like that, you know, lines in the pants sculpted, a little pocket chain. You know, it's it's a great looking figure. I just wish it functioned a little better, you know? Uh, there were a couple accessories that I have not shown yet. First up, he comes with a crowbar, you know, to beat Jason Todd with, because 
this is a pretty standard accessory for a Joker figure. You know, pretty iconic weapon of his. And the one I'll probably end up displaying him with the way too long gun. Uh, I have my figure arts in Justice Joker displayed with something similar. Uh, usually if they give Joker a gun, it's either a long one like this or a short one that has a bang flag hanging out of it. Uh, one, because that's just Joker's style, and two, because these cla they claim these are adult collectible figures, but they're trying to sell them to kids as well, and if you have these more goofy-looking guns, then it won't upset parents as much. But he doesn't come with any interchangeable hands or anything, so you can't hold both of the accessories at once. That's That's the problem. You can hold one or the other, and I'm actually having trouble getting just one in his hand, to be honest here. There we, that's better. Yeah, you can see he's got this kind of open hand and then a holding hand. So you really only have one, uh, one accessory option at a time. But yeah, let's uh, do some size comparisons now. First up, we have the Joker with a couple other DC figures that share the same scale as him. From DC Direct DC Collectibles, here on the left we have the DC Essentials Classic Superman. Very, very cool fig. And on the right we have the McFarlane DC Multiverse Azriel Batman from Batman Curse of the White Knight. And there is a specific Joker that goes with that uh, storyline that McFarlane made as well. But, uh, I mean, I think he looks good with both lines. I mean... As long as the figure scales well with their own line, it's good. He looks a little odd with the Azrael Batman because their art styles are so different, you know? But, uh, I still think they look pretty good together. Now let's show them with some defunct lines. Uh, here on the left we have a Blue Lantern Kyle Rayner from Mattel. As you can see, it's a little too small for our current major DC toy line. And on the right, we have the DC Icons Blue Beetle, Jamie Reyes. I know he's a teenager, but it's also still way too small. So, you know, if you have a lot of DC Icons or Mattel figures, they're just not going to go with this Joker. You're going to need one of the Jokers from those lines. So what are my final thoughts on the McFarlane DC Multiverse Joker DC Rebirth figure? It's pretty cool. It was nice to McFarlane to just give us a nice general modern Joker. Uh, I very much do like it. Uh, my only big problem with it is the articulation. I think it could have been much better, to be honest. Other than that, though, it's pretty cool. Like, uh, McFarlane has released 2,000 different Batman figures, so you're going to need a Joker to go with them, and this is a Joker. But yeah, it's not a bad figure, but I do feel like it could be better, and I still don't understand all the orange around the eyes. Good smile, though. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And next time we'll probably be reviewing a Xenomorph, so stay tuned for that. Bye for now.